Star copies all. Go ahead. Message to Observer. Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hello, Mrs. Colling. How are you? I'm fine. Listen, can you call me Anna? <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> That's lovely. Makes me sad. It reminds me when I used to be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I appreciate you uh, rolling with the punches last minute. I wanted to kind of adjust things to get as many people as possible. I know we were, uh, I was kind of capped with the attendance, but I definitely appreciate you taking the time to come out and join the community uh, and, and just kind of talk to us. We've always been a, a huge, huge believer and a follower of yours, so we're, we're delighted to have you out. You are more than welcome, as I said, Andrew, and it's a, a great pleasure and a joy to be here. So um, I'll be guided by you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have got the, the, the team on here. Um, and yep. with this webinar here, I, I just, you know, I kind of wanted to just roll in and, and discuss with you. And then I'm going to open up the floor to ask other people to ask you questions. And I'll kind of just roll out these questions here to you. And, uh, and we'll just go from there. But, um, you know, uh, basically the big thing, I know you have multiple books. I know you have multiple books. And the big thing, the main book that we speak about is The Complete Guide to Volume Price Analysis, which uh, it seems to be like your flagship style book. Um, mainly chapters four through seven, uh, because chapters four through seven really dive in to the whole world of VPA and volume price analysis. So it's really awesome. Uh, and I'm, I'm just basically, you know, my big thing is how did you come about doing this with all the technical indicators, with all the stuff, uh, with everything out there that someone can choose to trading? How did you fall upon something that's like all about volume and price action, like the meat and potatoes of, of the trading and, and the charts? Um, it, uh, more by accident than design, actually, to be honest, Andrew, um, <clears throat> as I've, uh, I think I mentioned in the book, and um, when I've been asked this question before, uh, David and I, just before the turn of the millennium, so it shows you how many years ago that was, we came, we stumbled across a um, an article in the Times newspaper here in in the UK. Um, we lived in London at the time, very, very close to the city of London, only about 20 minutes away from the financial center. And we were actually involved in uh, the city. We had, uh, uh, we had various businesses and one of our businesses involved us actually dealing with banks, brokerages, trading rooms, but we had absolutely no idea what, what went on there. Um, and then we stumbled across this um, this article in the Times, which was basically promoting uh, the view, the um, day trading. I have a clue what day trading was. You have to remember, this is pre-internet days. Well, internet was very, very, very young. Um, and we just, and because it was in the Times, a very respected paper and we said well you know what do you think and it was it wasn't really promoted as as you know a get rich quick it was much more promoted as you know do you really want to understand how the financial markets work so david went along first and he was uh, sort of blown away by the presentation and i i did i went along um shortly afterwards and it was was selling a, a program to learn to trade and we then subsequently discovered it was day trading day trading futures god help us um and um <laughs> no, it's crazy what you do when you know nothing yes ma'am so, but the, the one thing about it was that it was price action and volume and but also the volume was was there because it was the only metric that we had which actually told us what was really going on because it was very big on market manipulation something we'd never heard of before and if you stop and think about it if you think about the financial world and you know the, the us and them as it were because it's still us and them let's be honest yes, um they're there to take as much money off you <laughs> as often as possible. And that's how the, the, the volume element was, was really introduced to us. But the one thing, I the criticism I have is that it wasn't anything new because it was only a few years later when I sort of started researching a little bit more and the internet became more readily available and I could do, you know, searches online that I, I actually put together that the, the program we did was really based on the concepts that Richard Wyckoff had developed back in the thirties. And even there were bits of GAN in there. 
And through my own, you know, uh, uh, following through my own education about, about volume, I then stumbled across the work of, I don't know whether you've heard of Richard Ney. Um, I, I do mention him in the book. Yes, uh, he, wrote, he wrote a book called The Wall Street Gang. And he was, a, he was a, an old school heartthrob Hollywood actor. If you like black and white movies and you type in Richard Ney, all his old movies come up. And he got into inve- running a sort of an investment group and, you know, stock trading and stock tipping. And he was really the scourge of the SEC. And he... And in his book, he explains how the markets are constructed. You have specialists. So when a a company decides to have an IPO and wants to launch on an exchange, then it it is um, adopted by a specialist. Some of these people are are still there. And it is there. They are the market makers. They are responsible for the IPO and for managing the the stock and as i said and he soon pretty soon realized that what the specialists want and what you want are two very separate agendas um and based on that we kind of worked on that and i read about that and i looked at charts and and from the initial price action and volume and the interaction between the price action and volume and also candlesticks because as i've mentioned in the past the program we went on at the time, everyone used bars. Um, candlesticks weren't really, they certainly weren't on the institutional side. And as we we never used uh, price bars, we were introduced to the concept of candlesticks. So I had to go off and learn about candlesticks. And, you know, there's Steve Nysons, there's Bukowski's work as well. So that kind of all pulled it together. The two elements that I think I, I would like to take some credit for is I brought in um, support and resistance as part of the five elements of the VPA. I know we have supply and demand. I appreciate that. That's obviously one of Richard Wyckoff's uh, laws, three laws, but support and resistance and also the idea of multiple timeframes. I know some people call it timeframe continuity. I've always referred to it as looking at more than one timeframe. And I hope When we have a look at some charts, I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. That all took maybe 10, 12 years because the book was published in 2013. And so we decided to distill all that. But what I'd like, I'd like, I hope what comes through in the book is that I actually pay tribute to the people who came before um, and just say, there is this is not new there is there are variants of what these you know these uh, these uh, iconic people did in the past um and i hope what i've done now people will take this and then perhaps move it on the next you know the next stage as it were because nothing is um you know the things change all the time i mean the market you know, and I'm sure your 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 traders know, the market is evolving all the time. The technology evolves; everything changes. You know, nothing ever stays stays the uh, uh, stays the same. And if you don't adapt, you will die. It is a very 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 Darwinian. You have to adapt, and even a methodology like volume price analysis, as technology changes, there's there's new ways of looking at volume. That's kind of what I've been doing at the moment, uh, particularly with stocks. I've been looking at um, a more statistical approach to volume, looking at average volume, how you can kind of ho- you know focus more on what the numbers are telling you. It still doesn't get away from the principles of this re- intimate relationship between price action and volume, but it just gives it another uh, another layer if you like that you can that you can apply and uh, as always it is your base methodology it's your foundation you can then overlay on that whatever whatever indicator specialist standard that you want but once you have that ability to read that naked chart then you know i i know people who who start with a naked chart, have lots of indicators, 
and then go back to a naked chart. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That that that's so incredibly true. And everything you, you know you talked about there, it just it you know it it makes me excited because I remember starting out as as a young trader and coming up along the world when things were much much different, and and using all those indicators. And after I found exactly what you said in your book as a volume price analysis across multiple time frames, that it it changed the way I traded and allowed me to wipe everything off and allow me to see things much more clearly because I could just see the price section for what it was and not have to rely on all these, uh, you know, these these indicators that are past looking and, re and just reactive 15, 20 minutes in the future. So it, it was beautiful. That, so I, that, you know, I, I, it, it very much true. hits home to the things you said about about those things, about volume and price analysis on the charts without any indicators because it's exactly, it's the essence of trading is being able to read that as a foundation of a trader. That's right, but also bearing in mind that what the, the the methodology does for you is it it you are you are more you know what's going on, and especially when you know you 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 uh, you have to be accepting of the fact that these markets are manipulated, and the news street you know the news media is 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 used to you know uh, pull the twin levers of fear and greed at, at, the, at precisely the wrong moment, you, um, you know, but having that understanding of what you're seeing on the chart where, you know, are you reaching a distribution? Is this, you know, an accumulation phase coming after there's been a, a terrible fall, as it were, because everyone's been had their socks scared off, you know, you, you and every, there's this terrible selling and then you see the stopping volume coming in. And at the other end, you see the topping volume, it, you know, it, it tries to push higher. It, it, it kind of puts you in the driving seat. Would you, you know, that's how I, that's how I feel. So when I look at a chart and I think, mm, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, fine. I know what you're trying to do here. And with VPA, I, I feel it also takes away the the sting, if you like, out of the emotions that we all have to manage. And I don't care how experienced you are, because if you don't have any kind of emotion when you are trading, I don't believe that. Are you so ice cold um, that, you know, nothing affects you? We're not robots. And as I said, at least with VPA, that sting is taken out. And I think it possibly does the most important, one of the most important things. First of all, first the most important, I think, is help you stay in a move. Once getting in, you can set up as many, you know, in your checklist, you can have as many parameters for getting into a trade. You're the person who's decided, are you going to wait for a particular candle pattern? Are you going to wait for a particular signal in terms of a combination of patterns? Do you like a particular time frame? Do you like to see a particular setup? That's fairly straightforward to put together. But once you're in, the, that's when the emotion starts to take over because that's when your personality comes into play. What sort of person you are? Are you... Um, are you a more, where do you score on, if you like, the neuroticism spectrum? Not neurotic, how you respond to emotional situations. And, you know, it goes up and then it pulls back. And it's in those pullbacks, those little pullbacks in a trend, in a move. And you see the first candle come in and you think, mm, okay, it's coming to, and maybe it's come to a, an important support a resistance line. And then the next candle comes in, but the volume is lower. And perhaps even a third one comes in and the volume is even lower. Then you can say, ha ha, this is just, this is all it is. That is them. And it gets, oh, it helps you deal with that very, very difficult, you know, stage, if you like, of, of the trade. And then the next most important, I think, is when you get out. I mean, we don't, and I'm probably, I hope I'm not going to offend any body um there is an awful lot talked about reward you know ratio risk and reward well i'm not going to take a trade unless i have i can make three times my risk i'm not going to take a trade unless i can make five times my risk or whatever it is and i think well 
that would be wonderful. But the market doesn't care about your risk and reward. The market will do what it what it does, because if you if you wed yourself to a very fixed ratio, how do you feel when okay you take whatever it is you take and the market carries on in some considerable way? You know, does that not how does that make you feel? Now, you may be able to cope with that, which is fine. I personally couldn't. I would rather, you know, know from my my methodology, a system in inverted commas. Um, yeah, I think I think this move is done. Then you have the issue of personality come in uh, and your 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 basic traits, if you like. Um, some of us like to push it. And I had put my hand up to that. And I think, mm, I shouldn't have pushed it. It's my, you know, I, yeah. but I can I can step away from it. And I don't say, well, I should have done that. I could have done that. I would have done that. And I'd like to think with volume price analysis, you know, you do have more of an advantage than maybe someone who is simply either price action trading or just based on, an indicator. You said about indicators, and everybody starts that way. They they kind of start from the wrong end of the spectrum because indicators are are they're only there to support what the price. You know, there there are price based indicators. There are there are volume based indicators. There's the if you look at the volume, of, you know, the one that are based on the volume at price, where you I have a volume point of control. You know they are, but but they're there to support because they tell me where are those important levels. That's what. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And you know that's that's that reg retroactive nature that that makes them, I think, um, not pertinent. But you know exactly what you said is forcing stuff. Um, it allowing the setup to happen based on exactly like the data that's in front of you is game changing. And yes. that's what's beautiful about it is that it, the setup is either there or it's not. It's not based on a calculation. It's not based on equations. The setup, the price action, either there or it's not. And it, that allows yes. you to be a little bit more patient, yes. a little more analytical with the setups. And yes. that's why yes. I think it's it's pure. It's yes. it's a fantastic way to trade. Yes. And you do also, um, because that's the discretionary part, you also have to do factor in um, – uh, I'm not going to not some well. There's the seasonality aspect as well, but even on the trading day, uh, there are times when participation is not going to be as um, you know it's it, it it's it's not as um, as much as a, as at other times. I mean, this week is a is a is 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 a short week, but then what happens is if you like to trade a particular instrument or a particular stock you get to know what that stock does over a period of time you get to know it really intimately and you think right is you know what does it tend to do at the open particularly if it's been traded in you know how how has it been traded in the pre market you get to know what is high medium and low perhaps for that particular stock. This is where average, I mean, average volume is, is a really, I think a really interesting metric, but then like every statistical method, um, I, I think I use for stocks, I've, I've been looking at Finviz. I don't know if you probably are aware of that screen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma you know, you look at the average volume, but it's important to know, well, how are they, how have they arrived at that average volume figure? Because you can make an average however you want. I believe on Finviz, it's like three months and it's, it's okay, but it's, it's interesting because you can go over the chart and, you know, based with just that piece of knowledge and look at what, you know, where was it above average? Where was it below average? But then you have to apply it to what the candle looks like. What is the spread of that candle? Is it very compressed? Is it very wide? And then you, that's when you will get your anomalies. I had a, a quant contact me some time ago, he, I, whose name I have forgotten. And he um, was very much into volume. And there are a lot of quant people out there programming using volume. And he couldn't quite make it work, but he came across the book and then he, he emailed me. And he said, actually, he said, what I had been missing was 
Not so much that I didn't understand the volume, but I didn't really pay enough attention to what the candle looked like, the, you know, the actual physical appearance of the candle. Did it have a wick? Did it not have a wick? And he said, and as soon as he saw that, he kind of said, yeah, I, I get it now. So the two are intimately connected. And, you know, that's, but it, as I said, it takes time. I hope with the books, you don't have to wait as long as I, as, as it took David and I to get to, to this point, because I'd like to think with the books, we have accelerated the, the learning curve, as it were. And my my uh, uh, my last point on it is to say I completely slipped my mind because I was thinking of something completely different. Um, is with um, uh, yes, I know. When you look back on a chart and you know look for your particular setups, two bar reversals, tweezer tops, tweezer bottom. You know, there's a whole raft of um, of, of candle patterns, hammers, shooting stars. It's very easy to look back and say, oh, that was a successful one. Oh, that was a successful one. But you must force yourself to look at the times that they didn't work, that for some reason the setup looked okay, but it, there was no follow through. It doesn't happen. You know, I, I can't give you the, the statistics. All I can say is it can happen. But if you look back and you look at the time and sometimes you look at the date and sometimes you look, you know, what else was happening. You you can have a reason why it didn't work. Um, but generally, as I said, look back at a chart and it's not back testing. It's purely observational because they those setups, those configurations, they will repeat. They will come again. And by looking at another time frame so if you're on the 5 minute chart for example look at the hourly chart particularly for support and resistance and how you measure your support and resistance that's very much up to you i says, i have a i have a, a particular price based one i have a volume based one and i some and i also have um, a camarilla level that we've uh, that we've developed as well and you know you, you're on the fast faster time frame, and it stops, and you think, mm, but you can't see anything. Check out the hourly chart, and the chances are you will probably find you've reached um, a significant pause, at least a pause point. And then you go back to looking at the volume in the pullback. Yes, ma'am. Um in in terms of that, do you find yourself uh, giving precedence to the longer term time frames, like more weight to the monthly, weekly candles as opposed to like the fifteen or hundred twenty minute candles, the shorter stuff? Even if you're on the shorter term stuff, I think you should look um, at the end of the week, um, and those are the examples that I've I've actually got. If we're going to have a look at at some charts or, or take some look at charts or take some questions, is have a look at the last week's closing candles on the four indices uh the four indices are, are obviously the es the the uh, the s p the dow the nasdaq and i've actually got the russell 2000 and you will see exactly what i mean because the what the weekly tells you is it will give you at least an indication of the bias for the following week now this is where you also have to think just think, ah, oh, now last week, was it um would it have been considered a heavily traded week? Are we at uh, are we at Christmas time, for example? But last week it was end of month. I appreciate there's a lot of you know selling, you know, sometimes selling comes in because it um fund managers have to reconcile their positions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But generally, what was the close on the week? Because that will give you maybe a forward view to what is happening this week. And obviously, you then look forward and look at, say, well, what are going what are the risk events going to be this week? I mean, the biggest one this week is, is tomorrow. We've uh, Not tomorrow, Thursday. We've got non-farm payroll. And um, we'll see what that, what, uh, you know, what else is going. Also, in terms of risk events, um, just generally, I mean, even fundamental news releases, they have a 
they have a um they have a um a cycle and if you use an economic calendar you will see releases are given um weighting in terms of their impact on the market and but the calendar can be a little bit misleading because at the moment everything is obviously about inflation clearly and obviously about you know the the the, the labor market but if you scroll back maybe 18 months or so um interest rates no one was interested in the cpi no one was interested in uh, in um in um um the, you know the labor market because as far as the fed was concerned they you know they they had their 2% and less they had their, their 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 you know unemployment was at whatever so even though they were judged to be impactful uh on a on a, um, a, a you know a high impact level um they they wouldn't have had they didn't have the impact that they have now when things are you know very 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 different yeah you uh, you've you you've you've pulled it up now if you look at the s&p uh, 500 e mini that's uh where was that the weekly chart yeah yes right here yeah that one here and now what you know you look at that just just eyeball it what, what does that tell you what is likely to happen you know and then if you go to as i said then what have we got here then we have the, yeah, uh, the nasdaq on the top right here yeah the, the nasdaq russell's and the dow and the, the Russell and the Dow, and if you um, if you pull up the the uh, and and the other thing with with VPA as well is um, the other thing with VPA as well is you will see buying coming in, and you will see price action that is contrary to what you are hearing and reading in the news. So it's almost like a contrarian indicator in the sense that um when we had the banking crisis uh a f it was only a two or three weeks ago um if you look at what the indices were doing you, why weren't they crashing why wasn't the dow crashing a thousand points you know as as, as uh, what we you know but why wasn't it reflected whereas if you look at the, I, I look at the the YM because I like to look at the twenty four hour market. Mm -hmm. um, you will see on the daily chart for the YM, you will see a whole raft of candles. If you pull up the YM daily, there we go. I'll go to the yeah, on just on the YM. There we go. Yeah, and if you expand those last candles there the last bit there that's it now if you if you hover over it those candles what are you seeing you're seeing candles with wicks to the bottom a mm -hmm. uh, ton of volume coming in at a time when everyone thought you know the sky was falling in and it you can it it takes without the volume there i don't know how you would you know, take the trade. And obviously on a daily basis, that candle, any of those candles with those, with that deep wick there, um, on a, on the day, you would have had some great moves to the upside and also to the downside. Now, where those upside moves or downside moves would have come, obviously this is the, um, this is the 24 hour market. And the reason for having the, the Globex up is obviously you've got, news coming out at 1 30 so i think we had adp today the 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 uh, uh the employment data uh and and often what will happen is uh, whatever happens in globex then there's a catch-up when you come to the physical open not always so i always think if you do trade on a daily basis the you know the es or the or the spy um have the the um the equivalent 24 hour market and just see you know just see what what that does yes ma'am so like you're saying here like the with the major bottom wicks you're seeing here that w if we did not see the volume we wouldn't be able to anticipate no. this upward move even in the midst of all no. the banking crashing to be to be fair to price action traders to be fair and i have to say this you know they would call them i think pin bars you know anything with a sort of wick to the bottom and you you could say that they, they're a pin bar now i appreciate 
you, you've also got that in a congestion. You're 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 basically moving sideways um, because, as I said, you know the we always have to be aware of of what price cycle we are at the moment. But we this is the, this is the daily chart that you could be looking at a five minute or a or a, an hourly. It really doesn't matter because you know the price action is self similar. Um, that would tell you that that is you know it is bullish because by virtue of the fact that 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 a wick to the bottom of that candle it has to be buying but what the volume does it really reinforces the strength now it it didn't you know it didn't occur immediately it didn't happen you know we have had v-shaped reversals if you recall back in Oh, back in the day before 20, 2020 was obviously the shortest living recession, wasn't it? Because we had we had uh, we had COVID, and then wham, that went up. But previous to that, if you go back to is it twenty twenty one? Yeah, you, you will find some quite impressive V shaped um, reversals. Right here, twenty eighteen. Uh, yeah, twenty eighteen. Yeah. That's right. And you know, at the time, because because also you have to bear in mind this was coming at a, at a at a point where this bull market had been going for 10 years since t- 2008 you know the, since 2008 2009 and at each time there was a significant you know fall that was it that's it it's, it's all over now it's all over it's all over um and you know I, I always think back to those days when you know the S&P got to 666 i thought that was quite iconic yes it was <laughs> yes it was. And that was the biggest hammer candle in the world, but you know, accompanied by by lots and lots, lots and lots of volume. So, as I said, it's so that's that's the daily and the weekly. But you will find that repeated, and you will find it also in individual stocks. Um, the two stocks that I um, have written, well, I started to write about, and I'm going to follow them through. One of them has been Nvidia, and one of them has been Meta. But Meta has been probably the most interesting of the of of the two in terms of um the VPA yeah, here's better right um, here yeah and if we go to i think it was the let's have a look uh let's is that the daily if you go to the weekly chart actually that's because as i said it it takes all the gaps out of from earnings and what have you yes ma'am if yeah. you go to the weekly yeah that's the weekly chart. right here yeah and uh, even without you know you start putting some support and res- support lines resistance lines if you look at when last year was a terrible time for for facebook meta they they really you know this this whole idea of the metaverse and you know it was it was taken as as a bit of a joke i have to say from my other certain other studies i i wouldn't underestimate um, Meta, and I certainly would never underestimate Zuckerberg um, and the whole AI thing. The, the AI thing has been obviously that's given a boost to stocks like Meta, Nvidia, Inter, you know, all the um, you know, any company that says we are involved with AI. That's it. It seems to attract a, a lot of attention. But I think what will happen is, like the days of the dot com boom, is you will have um, you know you have a lot of new stocks coming in a lot of fun money will go to them and then you might get a bit of a, a you know i wouldn't say a bust exactly and i think it's maybe like one or two years down the line pretty much like the internet was back in 2000 and then it you know came back came back again but the difference this time is that they are companies that are really well established and have got they've got money I mean, they're, 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 if you look at their fundamentals and you look at their, you know, their debt uh, 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 ratio, it, these are not speculative companies. There will be speculative companies, but it's coming from a place of of solidity, if if you like. Google, Alpha, Alphabet, Microsoft, obviously, you know, it'll be, and it'll be the companies that provide the the, the picks and shovels, if you like, who will who are certainly well worth looking for. But Meta got down to eighty, and if you look at those two, the 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 two down candles just before you had the reversal. So if you um, if, 
if you hit um andrew if you hit the the one to the third icon down on the right hand side it will bring up the volume you know on your right hand side that that one that's it that's okay. it if you hold that over so that was this uh 519 and you think oh right that's it meta is finished that's it look at it'll go down to 30 dollars or zero but then you look at the next candle and you have 419 million but look at the size of the candle mm -hmm. you know if that was if if that was if that was going to be representative that candle of the volume that's coming in should that candle not be wider Yes, ma'am. Like way down here, you would think of that much volume. Way down there. That's right. So in that candle, there must be some stopping volume. There must be clearly some buying. It's, you know, and now you could say, right, well, I'm going to go off one candle. It's very tempting. And but if you look at the next candle, um, you know, you that that kind of confirms it. You say, right, that's it. Then it, you know, then it goes into a little bit of um, um, consolidation. Look at the date. There may have been a little test there, a low volume test, if you see, just to make sure all the selling was absorbed. I would just, yeah, probably even that one, yeah, maybe a little, volume. little volume test. You don't, you don't always get them. And then it starts. And if you think about it, anyone who bought at 80, where they're 88 now, what is it now? 200. I mean, that's some, that's pretty impressive. Incredible. In, do you not think so? Oh, absolutely. It's incredible. The fact that it's, it's like, it's a hundred multiple, multi, tri, triple percent gains. It's just insane. Absolutely. I mean, it's in, it, insane it, against a background of rising, infl you know, inflation worries, geopolitical risks. Uh, I mean, I can't, you know, give me five five things that tell that should tell us that you know the world is coming to an end. But what's interesting, you know, you have that up candle, which is quite a big up candle on the on the way up. You know the, that one. Look now, the volume under that is a little bit, mm, you know, it, it, it's a, a little bit anomalous. It's three hundred and forty. Fine. Now look at the next three candles, which is what I wanted to tell you, explain about. Is this a reversal? I accept that there was there may be people there who would be taking their profit because if you think about it, they think, great, well, it's been 88, it's now a hundred. Do you know what? That's really not a bad profit. I might as well take it. But if you look at the three pullback candles, what is the volume doing? Dropping. What is the volume? Nothing. That's it. Yeah, and so then 96, it 96, 130, and then 96, so descending. That's right. And then you have the next push up. And you have you now have the volume falling on the way up. I this is from uh, this is from last week. So are we expecting yeah a, a, a pullback? And where is it going? You this is where your this is where your resistance levels come in. You would have to look back at the chart. I always say that when a, a stock has had a, a you know quite a big fall. Um, what you have is you do have a lot of sort of bag holders. So maybe people who bought thinking, for example, if you go back to April last year, if April um, back to April last year there, that little bit of um, that, that, you know, that we had the big fall, didn't it? From 320, then it went, that's it. And then it went, then it did go up and you look at the volume again underneath it and it's falling. But you would have people there who are saying, ah, oh, well, maybe that's bottom. That's it. That's the bottom is in because you have a nice big up candle. Yeah, you got that. And you think, great, they bought. So they may be bought at 211. And then what happens? It, you... it, goes, it goes down. It goes down even further. You know, it hasn't, it, you know, it, it, there's more of a washout. And you've got, um, you know, and the the actual bottom is down at in in the 80 i think it was 88 or something like that now what happens is when it goes back to that level you you could have people who got in and are now so grateful to take their $1 profit <laughs> do you know what i mean yes, and, and they say that's it i'm out 
I'm out and 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 uh, away they go. But I'm I'm I think I think this chart more than probably more than anything I think is just the poster child for vo for volume price analysis. I really do, I really do, and and to help you with this, you know, this uh, this uh, you know, with the, coping with this emotion. But what's interesting is that if it does get through, you've actually now, this resistance will now form a really nice support line, a really nice support line, I think. So I break, think. break it through here, you would anticipate it's kind of like the reverse of this, where we break yes. above and then we come back and use it as support. Yes, yes. yes. But that's, it's it's like floors and, as we say in the book, it's like floors and ceilings, you know, the, 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 the ceiling then becomes the floor. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the all time high, it, it's not going to happen immediately. It is just something to watch. It may consolidate at this level for a little while. There's all, you know, there's, um, we, what is it now? We've got uh, Easter coming as a holiday. Then then we've got April, May, and then we've got the summer months. Sometimes, you know, liquidity starts to, to, to drop off. Um, and of course, if, if you were thinking about investing in this stock, you would then also look at the fund its fundamental metrics. You would look at the cash flow. You would look at the at the um, uh, at the debt in particular, and also what's what's Mark Zuckerberg doing? He's um, in, I, I mentioned to someone else there was I was reading about a particular fund manager who sort of actively dislikes him and he admits that because of his personal dislike he has actually missed some of the moves all of the moves and he's now kind of thinking that well Zuckerberg has, has grown up in a sense that um he, the company is 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 very well placed it, it's everything everyone's going to face problems but they're, you know, they're restructuring in the sense that uh, they're laying off people that they don't need. And th those are going to be the successful companies going. I mean, you know, McDonald's are laying off people, um, everyone, because clearly they can see some tough times, times ahead. Um, and, you know, if they haven't got a lot of debt or they can service their debt, then there's no reason. Uh, the interesting thing about that is sometimes you can have um, a really, you can have a strong company, but you have a lousy chart. And they're quite interesting because, you know, maybe the market makers aren't ready to to move it higher. And you, you've got a strong, you know, balance sheet, uh, good metrics, but the chart is, um, you know, you, you want to see the chart like this you, you you know you've got you've got solid fundamentals and maybe an an opportunity an opportunity so i it's definitely i think definitely one to watch i don't know enough about on the option side i do know i i looked up when we talked spoke the other day i did check out on bar chart um the stocks and etfs and indices that are most heavily traded and i think meta is in there isn't it I, I believe it's it's not the top but it's one of the ones that it's it's got good liquidity yes yes and i believe uh, the last allocation the s&p they, they they raised it up just because i think of the, of the stock price appreciation yes 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 so that that was that one the other one i looked at was uh, nvidia and nvidia is more interesting on the weekly as well because if we recall the markets in 2022 they they reversed in october the 13th october the 13th was quite an important turning point again at a time when they weren't expected to do and if you look again look at that candle there and you've got the volume underneath it you've got a very small candle and you know there has to be buying in there as well and you have the start of a of a of, of a, a small trend 
uh, a trend with, you know, you the sort of the re reversal, it's not quite a V-shape, but, and then you look at the pullback back in December. Now I appreciate, this is what I was saying about, look at the dates that that happened. You would expect to fall off of volume anyway, but it's quite marked. So, and then you've now had this really, really strong trend uh, in in Nvidia and today I believe it's it's being gapped down today um partly because I think it's got caught with in some kind of chip semiconductor cold war between China Japan and uh, the US I think Japan is favoring more the US I haven't really looked I just caught the headline and also I caught some headlines that, um, Alphabet are saying that their chip is better than Nvidia's, so there's a bit of rivalry going going on there. But you know, we'll 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 see what happens. But again, look at the close of last week. You have a candle with a nice wick to the bottom of it, but the volume has fallen away. And you know, yeah, it's a lovely candle, but you know, hey. It's it, it, it's not ha you know it's not ha now. I appreciate the week hasn't finished. We've got you know two more days, but um, it's that's all. That's all. I, that's the point I would like to make on on that one. Excellent, excellent. And, and, and I, I wanted to dive into a question here because it's a question I get all the time because you would talk about these moves, and for someone looking at this charts, they could possibly see a target right about here, just because that's where we rejected last time. Yes. So my question to you is, and in planning a trade and planning like proactively on placing a possible short on, on a name such as this, what would yes. you say to a trader that is waiting for a target, but the price action tells us that we're ready for a pullback before you actually get to a target? Uh, would you say, obviously, adjust and adapt, uh, go ahead and take an entry, or would you be a little yes. bit more like, confirming um, on your price action? It depends how how... It, that comes down to temperament. I mean, first of all, these levels, they're not bands of steel. They're not rods of steel. And you'll find, you know, price will go through. They will, you know, they, they you have to be, you have to be, a, give them, you have to be flex, a little bit flexible with them. You can't, you know, you, you, you know, how you, they will never be pinpoint uh, as it's it's just a fact of life. It really is. But if you're moving into an area where there has been heavy selling in the past, and we can see there's been heavy selling in the past, that is possibly going to give you enough of a, of, of, of a confidence that, yeah, it hasn't quite got there. But if you look at the reversal that happened off that, off that point, that is quite a steep reversal. Now, we're not saying the same thing happens will happen necessarily again, but it's just one more factor to take into account when you think, yeah, I'm actually going into an area where it's, you know, it, it, it did suffer a bit. Do, uh, uh, do you know do you know what I mean um and it's it's a judge it is a judgment and that I can't give you I can't give you you know a um a more precise answer than that and and also if it's also getting to know um if Nvidia is is a is a stock you like to trade anyway so you've really got to know it you will recognize that you are reaching one of those points. I don't, sometimes as traders, we don't spend enough time looking at what's happening on the left-hand side of the chart. Um, and I suppose what this also uh, begs the question, um, and it's something David and I, we discussed and it, and it went into our book on binary options of all things. There's a huge a chapter on volatility in there. And it was, as a trader, um, you kind of have to decide if you like to tr trade three or four different instruments and you restrict yourself to two, three, four instruments, that chart isn't always necessarily going to be in a trend. It's going to be in, in, a, in a congestion. So you have to adopt or you have to refine 
more than one tactic. Trade, let's call it a trading tactic. Clearly, Nvidia, since you know the 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 reversal since the beginning of the year, has been in a really strong trend. You can't deny that. That's a beautiful trend, and it's already had one minor pullback, and now it looks as though. It could be in another one, but it could simply be that. We just have to wait and see. There are factors in there which tell us that, you know, it's reached this strong resistance point. So maybe it's going to be slightly deeper than that. But then, you know, if you believe this trend is going to go higher, um, maybe you could use it as a as a as, as an opportunity to re-enter or to put more position, you know, to buy more or you know, uh, whatever it is. But um, as a tr- as a trader, um, you are the tactic. Obviously, on the re- you were taking a reversal back in you know December or whenever you you know you entered. So that's one that's one tactic you would apply to this chart. But if this chart was in a in a in a heavy con- heavy congestion, um, you have to refine a tactic that would you know, um, that that would take account of what the chart is. So the chart, if you like, dictates the tactic that you use, or you say, actually, I'm only interested in reversals. I'm I'm more comfortable. I don't like congestion, even though congestion is a, you know, happens a lot, (laughs) a lot in a lot of stocks. And, you know, you can't avoid it. You can have a volatile congestion. You could have a quiet congestion. You know, it, there's, there's, there's different states of these phases of price action. Um, if you then say, no, nope, I'm really going to define one tactic and I really like reversals, then you can say, like, what kind of reversal? What do I look for in a reversal? What candle pattern do I do? I, what candle do I look? What candle pattern do I look for? Um, how can I blend maybe two candles together or read three candles um, in conjunction? And, and I simply scan a chart looking for that particular set up because that is what I'm looking for. Now, I could find a reversal within a congestion phase, but I know that it's not, you know, that reversal is not going to, you know, I could come off a a support, I could come off a resistance, but I'm not, you know, the chances are I'm not going to be in there very long. But do you see what I mean? So you either develop a particular tactic and you look out for opportunities or you have your instrument and you look at the chart and what VPA will tell you with the, can- the, pa- the, the price action, the candle, the support and resistance, um, what is the appropriate tactic to use? And that's where you can be let down by indicators because if you started at the wrong end of the spectrum, and let's take moving averages. Moving a- There's nothing wrong with moving averages, but if you apply them, to the wrong phase of price action, they're not going to work. They're just not going to work. So learn the phase, you know, understand the phase of price action that you are in and then apply the appropriate indicator to that phase of price action. Yeah, so that that's, it, it's fantastic advice. And I'm so happy to hear to hear you tell, um, you know, to, to discuss that with them is I could try, you uh, to master one tactic on there and wait for that setup or just really find that price action on a particular setup. It's, it's great. And um, that like, again, that's the beauty of it is that it requires you to be patient and you see either see the setup or you don't. Um, and it, that'll determine on your time frame how long you stay in a trade. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And staying in that trade, looking at that pullback, looking at the, at the pullbacks and saying, yep, it is just, it is just a pullback and the trend, you know, the move, will continue higher um it's you know it, it, it and how long you stay how long you can how long you can manage your emotion by staying in that trade i'd like to think that vpa will give you that little bit of extra confidence to stay in that trade because no one likes to listen in this business no one likes to lose money we don't like to lose face. We don't like to be, you know, we don't like to think that we were wrong because at the end of the day, it's a binary decision. Is it going up 
or is it going down? I appreciate with options it's slightly different because you have all sorts of, you know, you, but sometimes it doesn't matter whether it goes up or whether it goes down. But generally speaking for trading, the decision the trader has to make is, is this going to go up? Can I take some points? Can I make some money? Or is this going to go this go down? And a lot of people who come, uh, certainly older people who come to this business maybe have been very successful in a previous life and it's hard to take when you know you've been made a fool of <laughs> let's be honest you know not only have you lost your money you've been made a fool of you know how, how did why did I not see it it's so easy it's not because as I said all the emotion comes into play as well and I'd you know we'd like to think as I said with VPA you've just got that little bit extra confidence to calm your emotions down and you know but and of course patience and patience is something that is um not not everyone is blessed with a lot of patience but if you can develop that and just be patient you will be rewarded you will be rewarded and to go back to the question you said about um the comment you made about well reaching a a significant resistance um what those resistances also give you is on any time frame, it gives you, you know, go back to the risk and, you know, very definite risk and reward. And let's be a little bit, you know, let's go discretionary. It gives you um, an, some indication of where this price is likely to stop. That is your reward. Yeah. That is, and it will be variable because it depends where that resistance is. And you can then decide, you decide, yeah, I'm, I think if it gets to that S3 or if it gets to that, you know, uh, uh, volume level, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. That's fine. That's, that's, a, you've made the decision. It's great. And that's that proactive nature too, is like, you want to be proactive both with your entries and your exit instead of just being yes. at the whims of the market. Uh, yes. It's having control of yourself yes. and, and actually having those proactive yes. measures in place that allows yes. you to be profitable and consistent. Yes, we have no control over what is going on in the market. Of course we don't. We have no, you know, this, this is going on, this maelstrom is going on all around us. We only have control of where we get in, where we, how long we stay in, and when we get out. That's it. That's all we have. All, all we have. All we have. That's the only. That is what we have to. We have to control those three elements, and uh, and and you know, and and you you will become better with the chart reading. Just look at look at bare charts. Put put lines on. It doesn't matter if they're vertical, if they're horizontal. Just whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. It's excellent advice. It's excellent advice. <clears throat> um, it's you know, it's it's. I'm always trying to. Even myself, been doing this for you know over a decade, much you know obviously much shorter than you. Um, I'm always trying to refine, you know, for I call it sharpening the axe, refine that, and it's every day. It's probably a bigger battle of managing my mind than it is to actually managing managing the charts. Is telling myself that I, it's out of my control. All I can do is apply my system and go with yep. what the chart tells me. Yep, and don't don't beat yourself up about it. I mean, it's there's an awful lot of. Um, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, uh, a similarity with with sport. Uh, you know, you you the, the, as I said with um, with this is this is performance under pressure. <laughs> you know, sports people have to performance under pressure. Okay, you're not in front of ten thousand, twenty thousand people. You, you know, you're it's against you, which is probably even worse. Um, and but the one thing with with sport is, and I think it's very very relevant with with trading, is when a sports team loses or a sports person loses, um, there's like ten thousand reasons why it all went wrong. They they can pinpoint exactly where it went. But when they win and they're doing well, it can't really tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> they said, well, you know, we, we played our game and we stuck to our rules, which is probably true, actually. But, you know, which I suppose tells tells me that, you know, you learn more from failure than you do from from success. So that's that. That's. And there is another element as well with this this game, this this business is your personal attitude to um to money and success um 
Rich, there's a guy called Rich Friesen, uh, who I, I met a few years ago. He's He talks a lot about um, beliefs and how our upbringing has shaped our um, belief system about wealth, uh, self-esteem, and he he tells the story himself. He was uh, he was an options trader at the Phil- uh, the San Francisco pit. What was Philadelphia. It? Philadelphia? I can't remember. It was it's one of the old op- option pits, and he said that his father. He said he, said he only found true success when he puts aside his father's um, words to him and saying uh, that um, no one should earn more than $100,000 a year. And that was a self-limiting ambition for him because as far as his father was concerned, and it's, it's a, that's it, no one, no one needs more than 100000 a year. Now, that may be statistically true. Uh, I'm not. I'm not doubting it in in any way, shape, or form. And I've had a a, a personal um, thing from you know with with my father when uh, to do with uh, our business, one of our businesses that David and I used to uh, used to run. And I love my father, God bless him, is not with me, and you know, God rest his soul, is not with us anymore. But he was, you know, when we told him what our turnover was, he said. He said, "No, you don't." He said, "What? What? What? What, 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 what do you want to do that for?" <laughs> you know, it's and d- d- don't underestimate. You know this. The, 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 the I'm not say conditioning. It's just the the how you know the, these these um, these beliefs that are you know that that we adopt that sometimes subconsciously, and which can sometimes sabotage what you. Are actually doing. I mean, our first teacher in all this always said to us, he said, in this business, you have to be utterly cynical. You must be the ho- the most horriblest person. You don't have to be like that in your in your life. This is this is a business, and it's a it's it, it, it's a it's a very cynical business because you know there's no mercy. And uh, as I said, and it, but you don't you're not like that in your in your personal life. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, you know, managing that stuff and, and, and letting that creep in. Um, that's a big thing. And um, it, it's, it's definitely true. It's definitely true. And then of course, on top of that is you have, you, you know, you become overconfident and you think this is easy. And the worst thing you can do is have a, a fantastic win on your first trade. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, say, that's it. Yeah, like the, everyone gets one that first big trade that I'm sure everyone's familiar with. I mean, I've I've did it, and it was the worst thing oh. that that was the start of my demise when I first started. Was I've cracked it. Thing? I've cracked it. It's like going to a casino or going on a on a uh, you know putting some money on the on your first horse race and you win big and you think, oh, that's it. I'm done it. I've arrived. <laughs> that, that hot hand. <laughs> terrible. It's terrible, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> worst thing that could ever happen. <laughs> So I, I do have, I know we're, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know, I know you're busy, yeah, but I, I do have a, one big overarching question. There's something you kind of said a, a earlier that uh, you can kind of be made a fool of and you don't understand why. And in this market that it's seemingly becoming with the huge participation in options and options are called derivatives for a reason. They're derivative of the equities. But in this market, would you say that they're becoming more of like the primary vehicle that's leading the market in terms of Yes. All the all this price action, like what what would what would you yes. what would you take on that? I would say it's the wag, it's the do, it's the tail wagging the dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really would. I, I genuinely. Um, when we first started, I have no idea what options were. Absolutely not a clue. And as as I mentioned to you, yeah, we we've, we've dabbled in in covered calls uh, on uh, on a on a portfolio to to build up extra income, basically. But the sheer volume of participation in the options, they are now, I think in a way, I think the the, is it the CBO, you know, when they introduce these, um, these very short dated options, the zero 
zero time, you know, uh, zero uh, uh, day uh, to expiry as well. I, I genu- I'm not sure they really knew what, what they were unleashing. It's like the law of unintended consequences. And if you, if you are in options, great, because previously it was, you know, look at the underlying, what's that doing? And, you know, then you adopted your option uh, accordingly. But it seems it's the other way around. And I have read someone else, uh, I get lots of emails, and it's a case of even in the short dated options, there's a lot of institutions in there as well. It's a way to make good, quick money. So why not? But I think it's, I'm not sure it's at that tipping point but it's certainly, uh, or certainly in the in in the, the only thing I would say is it is restricted at the moment. I mean, I was looking at the numbers for the top twenty or so from a bar chart, and there's a huge discrepancy between what goes on in the spy and what goes on in you know I don't know the Russell. But then the the, the, the I think the impact that it has is the S and P five hundred is like the global benchmark for risk and sentiment. And that's where it could have, I don't know, a, a, a knock on, on effect. So yeah, definitely. Uh, David, do you agree? David's nodding in the background here. He said, yeah, I think it's the, the tail wagging the dog, but we'll see. Absolutely. And that, that's been, it, it it's interesting because there's a when SPY started the zero DT back in I believe it was October November there's been a notable change in price action and it's hard to tell is that coincidence or not uh, when they started the everyday zeros on SPY uh, that's yes. when the market kind of got a little bit tighter uh, although yeah. upwards trending obviously but a, the price action is a little bit uh, tamer than it has been in the year past yeah I mean I don't I uh, I have I've I've still got to do a lot of work on it myself and really understand it but. My understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you have the dealers that you know there, there, there is a market maker for options as well, and they've all got is it the delta? They've all they've got, got gamma hedging. They've got gamma hedges. They've got delta hedging. So there's there's an awful lot of manipulation goes on in options as well. Is that correct, Andrew? I would believe so. Absolutely. <laughs> To, to keep this balance all the time and of course you know if the, the if the price runs away then it's it it then it kind of had like a snowball effect so they have to go out and buy to keep their the 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 everything in balance as it were because you you know it, you've got to have this balance in 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 options so it's just another layer that you have to that you have to factor in as 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 it were um it's a, i mean it's it's great because there's more participation and it's great that people who um who would not you know have the option excuse the pun to participate in these huge markets have now uh, been given, you know, a foot in the door, as it were, with that, with nominally a small amount of money. But it's, um, you know, it, it will have consequences, um, you know, further further down the line. But I st- still say, regardless of all that, regardless of, um, you know, everything else, I still say, if you've got a chart, and you've got the price action, and you've got the volume, and you know, you're the support and resistance. They, you will still be able to do something with that information and be successful with it. Absolutely, and it's I'm sure everyone loves to hear that because that's been the big, the big overarching question I think that's uttered throughout the internet chains out there. So it's it's awesome to hear you say that that we could still do yeah. some good analysis even with the throws yes. of the options chain. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know they may the, the things may things may get I don't know I, it, as always with things like this it's when the regulators start to step in and they start to make things a little bit more difficult uh, and um, you know in they say they want to protect you but actually it's really a case of well we don't want you in there because you're causing all sorts of issues and the issues is is certainly what happened during covid uh the lockdown period is the sheer volume of 
new traders coming in with Webull and Robin Hood just, well, sadly burning their money, as it, as it were. Um, you know, it's it, it was a good thing we had all this participation, but a bad thing because it was a shame that so many just, you know, lost, lost, uh, lost so much. And, and in wanting to protect, in inverted commas, those, those new traders, the the entry becomes more and more um more and more difficult and i hope that that doesn't happen i hope with you know more education and and just an understanding of what you're do- that the pitfalls and there are pitfalls um you know we we it doesn't come to a a halt as it were absolutely yes yes ma'am i, I definitely agree um, coming to the end, uh, would you, would you want would it be okay if we took some questions from from the community? I know they're yeah, posting some questions, and I know um, right. I would Absolutely. love to get yes, ma'am. So I think the first big one, and I I'd, I'd love this question, um, comes from Jonathan, and he's asking. We obviously we're VPA traders, and we're we're looking for outlier volume that we talked about earlier, such as like the meta. But how do you incorporate big catalyst events such as the CPI events going out through two thousand twenty two? I know there are some days that. We had phenomenal volume, volume, but it was due to the nature of the of the events. And it's like, how do you incorporate that into into the analysis? Does that still normal, or is it just like you kind of like disregard that? I think you have to. This it goes actually back to what I was saying previously, and that is um, under, un, having an understanding of which events, risk events, releases are likely to have an outsized impact on the price now that usually usually is what two things from a technical perspective you tend to find that that is it's just a perfect time for trapping uh, because if you think about it cpi it was all about inflation in in 2022 but this is what i said earlier back in 21 and back in 20 no one really inflation wasn't going anywhere you know it was stuck at less than i don't know two percent it wasn't really two percent but that's what the official figures say so when you had a cpi when you had then it was a different risk event so understand the what likely impact a risk event is going to is going to have it's likely to have an outsize impact because everyone's talking about inflation and you as a trader have to make a a decision knowing that it is going to have an outsized impact you you are perfectly within your uh uh, you know with uh perfect within reason to step aside and maybe fade we do this a lot in forex um i know we're not talking about foreign exchange now but david and i i do a lot with forex and i uh, write about forex as well the currencies and the currency pairs are uh, the drivers one of the drivers for um the, a currency is is fun is news releases and they come around with monotonous regularity every single month we know when they're coming out we had a classic example uh overnight with the kiwi dollar when the uh, the the um, the central bank actually raised interest rates more than anticipated by the market, and it had a huge impact outside. Now, you can step aside, and you because what happens is you always get a fade, always get a fade, and look for that fade because once that is over, you will tend to find whatever the trend was. It will it will carry on through. So yes, you can treat it as a completely isolated event, but whether you want to participate in that event is entirely up to you. And being option traders, you have the option, excuse the pun, of coming up with a a, a, a tactic that can take account of whether do you care whether it goes up or down. I don't know. I mean, I'm not for not for me to say. The other thing to bear in mind is obviously have this is where globex comes in because if it comes out at 1 30 our time which is 8 30 which is before the actual open sometimes that isn't followed necessarily followed through because what happens with news releases you always get what i call the knee-jerk reaction you will get it with non-farm payroll the market will react you will get volatility you will get spikes 
um, both of volume and of price. And but the price side, it's a perfect example. It's a perfect opportunity because, uh, to trap traders because what traders can't resist is fast moving prices. And, oh, it's moving fast. I must get in. I must get in. It's this fear of missing out. But if you just step, take a step back, wait for that knee jerk to to calm. And then say, yeah, you can set maybe, and set, and and it, what it does is it sets levels. It sets levels of, of resistance and support. You'll see it in the in the um, faster time frame. A classic one is uh, the way to do it is to, it's the way to learn it. And this is what we tell our forex students: is watch something like the FOMC, and um, you will get the statement. And you will get the price doing one thing. And then as soon as Powell starts to speak, what we say to our, our traders is, is just listen, don't do anything, but listen to the words that are moving the market. So Powell will start to talk, he will start, he will, you know, use a phrase because all these speeches from central bankers they are all very carefully crafted they are crafted first of all sometimes it's to throw a pebble in in the pond and just see you know what kind of ripple it has and then they'll quickly change so don't ever think that anyone from a central bank is talking spontaneously or off the cuff they are all very carefully crafted phrases and what we say to our new students is Listen to what he says. Is there a particular phrase? Christine Lagarde is another one. They, they're all, you know, but let's stay with Jay Powell. And then watch the price action. And you will soon, soon be able, as soon as he says, it's like a trigger word. Yeah, that's it. Price goes up. Because the that's what the algos are are programmed to. They they are programmed to respond to certain key phrases. Now. Obviously, with CPI, you don't have key phrases. Um, but with non-farm payroll, for example, on Friday, you will get a, an instant reaction to the headline number. But within the non-farm payroll data, there's a whole raft of data which takes time for the market to absorb. So, you know, yes, there's the headline number, but you really want to be looking at average earnings. You want to be looking at, oh, well, average earnings is probably the one. You want to be looking at the participation rate. There are, And then when the market starts to absorb that, then the price, then you get a better fix on what is likely to happen. Is, does that answer your question, Jonathan? I believe it. Yes, yeah. So that that's that's exactly like, that's exactly, it's a beautiful way to put it because it, it's, what you said is that those are cra carefully crafted statements uh, that yeah. respond to the algos. And it's just, if you can kick, sit back and watch, it, it's it's beautiful. So uh, awesome. It, it, it's it's amazing to hear it. You're welcome. More, more manipulation. <laughs> oh yeah. Everything's manipulated. Everything's manipulated. So another, another question. Um, let me see. I just, started. oh, so. This is a good one. Uh, this is a this is a comment that you had you made in your book that struck chord with a lot of people because you hear this statement around everything. Pretty much every community says it, and that's the trend is your friend. Play the trend. But in your book, you you counter that statement. So, how do you go about managing that feeling, especially after you get like a bigger a bigger break, a trend formation at a particular level? Uh, when people say just play the trend, the trend is your friend. The trend is your friend. They use that catchphrase. Um. Only to the extent that, as I said, with just primaries and secondaries, primaries and secondaries. Right. Okay. I think David just remind me. Okay. Um, that really came out of the work, I said the Wyckoff work, and that is understanding uh the difference between a primary trend and a secondary trend. Now, I mean, I'm talking more, it's a bit more than just a pullback. Uh, if we look at, um, let's have a look. Let's have. I'm just looking at this chart, just completely randomly to see if I can have a. Um, yeah, if you go back to August the 19th, Andrew. If you put your counter, your your August the 19th. Right. The 19th yeah, about yeah. there to the 20. There we are. Yeah. Now you in that that August. If you could move back a bit, 
let's have a look. There we are. Do you see that you, you've come to a uh, you've come to four thousand three hundred, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. You come that right. You've come to a re- basically a reversal. Previous to that, you had a uh, you had a kind of trend going. But let's con- let's consider that one. Now that you you've come now we haven't we're not coming out of a congestion because that's the point in the book was what I was trying to make was that trends are born out of congestion phases that that's where they spawn they're like you know salmon spawn but this one is I think makes the point about primary and, and secondary when you start a trend that, now this is obviously part of a reversal and it starts to go down and then you have the first pullback and then it carries on lower and can you see the pullbacks become slightly they become deeper the second one now you could say that is that's just a pullback that's that's a micro trend it is a secondary trend but the one further down becomes more that is a secondary trend further back up andrew further back up so you come down you come down, you've got a little pullback there, then the primary trend. Now, you know you're in a primary trend, okay, because obviously you've had the pullback there at that point, okay? Now, that's, you could say, well, that's another reversal point. What have you got? You've got um, you've got a bullish engulfing candle, haven't you? You've got a reasonable amount of money amount of it. But that secondary trend, that is all it is. It may be because the primary trend still carries on lower, and if you were to put some some trend lines on there, that would you know you, that then becomes more obvious. So it's it's this it's this understanding. I know there's also micro trends, but let's stick to primary and secondary. Once you've identified, you know, once you're in a in this trend, and we could see that it was a it looks like a primary trend lower, you will get points when yeah, is it a reversal? No, it's just a secondary. And then the primary carries, and it carries on considerably lower. As you can see, you've got rising volume all the way down. You've got narrowing spreads, and you know you've got um, uh, you've got stopping volume coming in as as well there. So that's really all I can I can describe it as. I'm just going to ask David and see what he thinks. But as I said, the principles come from Wyckoff. Yes. So they're Wyckoffian principles of primary and secondary. And just just um, referring back to right at the beginning, when you asked me the book, you know, came after so many years that we'd started with with VPA. And I have to say, it's only with the Internet. You can read Wyckoff's original work. It's all available. You can read Richard Ney's uh, uh, work out there. And you, what you will soon realise is that nothing's changed. The, the same principles that, you know, Ney was, uh, um, uh, Wyckoff was uh, uh, applying back in the 30s still apply today. They were doing it on paper charts. We're just uh, doing it on electronics. Anyway. Yeah, but, you know, they were doing it on paper charts and we're doing it on electronics. Is there anything you want to say about the trend? I think that's, does that help? Does that help to ask answer the question? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Probably the the S and P is um, is probably the E mini is maybe not such a um, a clear example because this is so heavily traded and there are so many algos in there and 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 what have you. So as as I said, it's um, let's see. There's, if you move over to December last year, uh, where are we? December. You've got that that congestion. You've got that sideways movement there. You have, and the other thing about trends, you have to remember. That, well, this is something we mentioned actually in one of our other books. Is um, there are different types of trends in the sense you can get a very smooth trend, you can get a very volatile trend going higher. Um, if you go back to maybe. 2017, 2018 on the charts. Yeah. There we are. There we go. Yeah. And there we are. There we are. If you look at um say from 2019 onwards, because that we had a very big V-shaped reversal on 2019, that we had a V-shape. And you look at that tr- and you look at that that move going higher. That is, uh, or even from September 19, further up. If you go, yeah, there's a bit there, that one there. But the one I really want is from September, October. September, keep going over. Keep go- There we are, that, that, that one there. 
that just you've just missed it. You know where you've put your line. September the fifth. Move over a little bit further to the right. To your right. Move over. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There. We are. There. Right. Now that is to, to all intents and purposes. That is a very smooth, very boring trend. Uh, narrow spreads and not a very volatile market. So that's one type of, of, of trend higher. You go back, to, go back to move further, then you have that big crash. Obviously, you've got COVID. And then you look at the next trend following COVID, and it's very messy. It's very, you've got smooth bits. So when people say the trend is your friend, yeah, fine. There is, there is some truth in that. But you've also got to understand that you know, not all trends are the same, just as no, not all congestion phases are the same. And identifying what kind of trend you're in will also, first of all, uh, it will di dictate the type of price action that you can expect. Um, as I said, if it's very volatile, if it's very whipsawing, it's, very, it's still going higher. You know, you're, you're still going in the right direction, but it's it's got some volatility behind it, and you it could be a bit choppy and on the faster time frames. But it's got some movement to it. When you've got a very smooth trend and very narrow price action, and and there's low volatility, that you know has its own problems, and and I keep reminding people have a look at the longer time frames because at the moment we are truly blessed with big candles lots of range but the s p 500 um i should say back four or five years ago oh my god it was like watching paint dry you know, you 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 were lucky if you did. I don't know a, a, a single digits in a, in a, in in a day. That was the norm. That's not the norm anymore. But these markets are not going to be around forever. So, as I said, understand the difference in what type of trend you're in, and accept that maybe we could be going back if once the you know if we have volatility we could go back to something like that look at the range of those candles in that uh you know from uh, october yeah you look at the range of the can okay there's one or two big candles there but there are an awful lot of sort of small candles as well and you've got congestion phases in 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 there as well so does that does that answer that one for you? Absolutely, absolutely does. Yes, I mean, in fact, that one right there was only a thirteen point day high to a low to high. Yes. So, yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, someone asked me, I, I, the other, I, I made a comment to someone else the other day, and I do remember a few years ago there was a, he's an English guy, and he was that's all he traded the S and S and P five hundred, all the 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 futures, the ES, and uh, he he would consider a good day a good day if he did four points wow. that was a good day that was a good day wow. but but the average at the time was 10 and certainly on globex globex was impossible it only moved like two points <laughs> yeah it's crazy you, you know you guys just you don't know how lucky you are <laughs> Oh, I yes, ma'am. Like, and I, I, I sound like your mother. You don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it that's exactly what the what, what a lot of people need to hear, especially they've all come online the past three years where it's, you know, sun the sun's shining, volatility is here, everything's great. Uh but mm -hmm. like 20, 2018, 2019 almost burnt me out. It almost made me want to quit because it was just it was every day was an absolute grind, a bore fest. Um yes. precisely because of that. Yes. I mean, I have been asked the question. I said, well, what do, what do you do? And I think this is where possibly, you know, maybe consider should you look at something else. But then this is like do you, if you want to be a specialist in one particular instrument and there's nothing, you know, that's great because you really get to know it intimately. Um, but, you know, you, you'll you be sticking hot pins in your eyes because this thing's not moving and you go to your desk every day and it's just moved. It hasn't moved. You think, oh, and that's, unfortunately, you know, you can become really, really frustrated. 
but maybe plan for when these days are no longer around and you know look look for something else i mean certainly on the on the stock side i think there'll always be stocks to um, to trade you know they may not be the ones you know the top 10 at, at the moment but there'll be others absolutely and 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 switching out from from different names like you know becoming a specialist of, of many different names because like s p by itself is not going to pay the bills uh, you're going to have to learn how to sell premium you're going to have to learn to trade other names precisely because of that so it's a great point yes 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 well, we do have a, a couple more questions here, and again, I know I know we're taking a lot of time here, and I appreciate that. Uh, we'll go over just uh, two more questions here, and then we'll and then we'll wrap it up for you. Um, sure. I guess the one thing which I, I think is a great a great question, because you, we do time frame continuity, and I'm a big 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 believer in time frame continuity. I think I think big to small is awesome. But what would you say in terms of? And I know my opinion personally is that scalping is a fleeting endeavor for the long term period. I think you can make it ha work for a shorter time frame, but consistency wanes when you're scalping. But having said that, what would be the shortest time frame that you could apply with confidence and consistency of VPA style analysis? Like what, what what would be the shortest time frame that you could actually drive accuracy from? Well, I'm smiling actually, because um, if you ever hear David, um, he does the 30 second on Ninja Trader. <laughs> <laughs> My people are gonna hate me. <laughs> I even got a 15 second. He's even had the 15 second. I mean, good grief. I mean, D David oh. is, it's a great way to learn. Yeah, he's. It, but as he said, it is actually a great way to learn, uh, because if the 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 patterns are there, and it is the fastest way to learn. I mean, you know, the weekly charts are, are great. They, they, of course, they are. They tell us an awful lot. But if you really just want to look at price action and volume, I always say the minute chart. But you could go even faster. I mean, I'm not advocate, necessarily advocating, you know, go for it. But to to see these patterns develop so quickly and spotting the anomalies quickly, um, it's a great way to learn. I'm not, as I said, and then you can move. To... And it just makes the point that VPA can be applied to any instrument in any time frame from the yes. very fastest. Yes, the and he's he's saying he's he's reinforcing the point that you can you know it is applicable to the fastest right through to the you know to the to uh, to the slower time frames. In terms of realistically um, on the faster on the faster time frames the the combination that i have found and it's, it's partly because of i have a particular in, um, uh, indicator that for the levels um i have the same level stay on there for the whole of the week uh, and that is the five minute benchmarked against the hour and i find with the the hourly chart um, the, the strong levels that appear on the hourly chart really do um, do come into play with anything below that. But it, for some reason, it works really well with the five minute chart, which actually kind of contradicts. Is it is it Alexander Elder? He had this kind of formula, didn't he? He said, if you were on the five minute, it's either a multiple of four or six. Well, a multiple of five minutes is um, 12, isn't it? Yeah, so it's six. Four or six is 20 or 30. 20 or 30, no. So I found the five minute with the with the 60 um, works really, really well. So more, like you're, you're, you were discussing more like a cyclical type of action where you're looking for yes. a certain amount of cycles. Yes, I yes. You would, look at, you would look at, uh, as I said, but with, with the hourly one, it's really... As I said, it goes back to these levels. It goes back to these um, uh, the support and, and resistance. Where I know, I, I just I just know because I've looked at these charts for so long that I know um, if you're on the five minute chart and then I go to the hour, I know that's where it is going to at least it's pause. Slow, slow the time frame, and it will always trump. So. Yes, and and our our belief is that the 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 slower the time frame. And you have a significant levels on those slower ones. They will, they are stronger because it's just the way it is. You you have to see it for yourself, you know, to to um, to see that in action, as it were. And they can act as they can act as as potential objectives, potential targets for you. Uh, you know, you're happily in the in the five minute, and it's you know it's it's going nicely. 
uh, and you know you you glance over at the hour and you think oh gosh it's it's coming up to something where it's significant and it will pause and then you need volume to push it through it doesn't mean it's you know necessarily not going going to reverse but it 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 will definitely pause i see what you're saying yes ma'am Excellent, excellent. Well, that that's a huge question because we're always talking about time frames of which is the best one. And I usually I usually park park the boat around you know five minute. That's usually where I'm yep. sticking to. And you know when I start no. my day off, I start off on the monthly. And I yes. I do my analysis to filter all the way down to the five minute. And I usually park hang out at the five minute when I'm doing active trading. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I was curious what your, what your take on that was. Yeah. Yeah. But as I said, it's for learning. If you want to see it fast. Then and you know you your, your platform supports it. Then great, have a look at it just just to see how it. Uh, I mean, it would you, you'd be exhausted after about half an hour, but oh boy, you you you'll certainly um, you'll certainly learn a lot on the on the on the because it's nice to see them develop really quickly. I mean, a lot of traders speed. You know, they have they have their their platform allows them to replay and they can speed up the replay which is another way that that, that you can do it is so once just use the naked chart just use the naked chart well i'm happy to hear you say that i, I try i try i think i'm a big believer in that myself so i i love to hear you say that the, the trading off nothing so that's good so uh, I'll wrap it up with one final question here, and I think it's a fantastic question. Um, and this may be a question or uh, a um, an insight into your further books, but what is one thing that was left out of the VPA book that you wish you would included or you thought about feature and like, man, I really wish I would have put that in that book? Um, quite a few things, actually, I would just say. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because I have to say that the, the data just wasn't available at the time. Um and I would say, I'll ask David see what he thinks. I thought there's two things, I think. First of all, the fact that you can use it as foundation methodology. And if you're already using a methodology, you're using a, a Fibonacci mm. or an Elliott Wave. Yeah, whatever. yeah. The fact that yeah. you don't have to change your methodology. No, that's true, actually. You bolt it in under yeah, and yeah. it just transforms everything. Yeah. Yeah, so, that that was the first, that that really came about when after the book was launched and we got a lot of emails from people who were there was one in particular he was an Elliott Wave trader, and he actually said um, he found it, you know he thought it was brilliant because it actually made the Elliott Wave more efficient. It, it could help him. It just was a was just another tool for him but it made him a better Elliott wave trader. And I think probably that's the first thing I maybe should have included a little bit about, um, look, you know, whatever you're using now, whether it's moving averages, Fibonacci, Elliott, uh, Andrew's pitchfork, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I maybe done something to show how the VPA you could then integrate it with what you're already using because you're, you know, you're obviously comfortable with it, but you want to maybe have a better success rate. So that's one thing. What was the other thing? That was pretty much. The, the other thing is, is secondaries and and using VPA to indicate when you're in a pullback in a secondary, yeah. and also yes. to indicate if you've missed an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, actually that's true. Into an opportunity. So that's maybe right. Congestion. Yeah, it breaks out. You think you've missed it. Mm. BPA will then give you a re-entry point. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yes. And and as, as, as David said, because, you know, since writing the book, obviously we've we've done more work and, and you know, just because you never stop learning. As I said, it, this once you have this methodology, it's not like that's it. I never I'm never going to add to my knowledge base again. And that is really the primary secondary trends, um, the re-entries, really kind of it's a more nuanced uh you know application of volume price analysis and we've we've, we've discussed it and and maybe maybe think about uh you know and that will be it that will be that's it and then there'll be a trilogy there'll be the the vpa book there'll be the examples book and there'll be like a pulling it all together as it were so yeah that that's that's what I would do for the for the the last one in in the set. 
Oh, that's very insightful. It's very insightful. Well, it's it's been uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, it's been awesome. I, I greatly appreciate you taking the time. I'm sure you've got a very busy schedule. You and David both to come out and, and talk to us. It's um, for me, it's it, it's like it's like Christmas for me because I I oh, it literally your book changed my system, and I've uh-huh. I've dedicated the past two years to trying to perpetuate your book and perpetuate what you teach you. Uh, to the people. So. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to be here, and uh, I definitely hope that I could speak to with you sometime in the future uh, down the road, especially as anytime. you start to release new books. Anytime, Andrew. Honestly, anytime. And as I said, if I know we haven't answered all the questions, they can send you the questions, and you can forward them on to me. I'd be more than happy to put, you know, put pen to paper, or you know, just write them all down or send it, and you can distribute it within your group. I'd be, we'd be more than happy to do that. So questions that haven't been uh, answered, as it were, anytime, you're more than welcome just to, you know, give me give me a call. You ever want to discuss anything? And we're always, David and I, we always like to learn from people like yourself because, not first of all, to know that you are successful, which is great. Your traders are successful. And that is such a pleasure. I can't tell you that tickles me pink as we say here that tickles me so much um and i'm so thrilled as as i said to someone else i said to you the other day i feel i've birthed you all (laughs) (laughs) you're all my children (laughs) (laughs) well i i am proud to call yourself one of your your vpa children for sure because it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful system absolutely and you know because it genuinely has you know changes your life your your family's life your friend's life uh, you know it's a horrible world we have at the moment and anything you can do to make you know your to protect the people that matter to you and and share with other people as well it's great wonderful and i wish you all the very very best and thank you so much for for having us here and you know yeah if you want me to do it again let's go for it <laughs> absolutely i would abs- i would be honored i'd be honored uh, maybe after uh you know, once the spring season kind of comes over, especially when we got bank earnings and tech earnings and all these things changing and making the charts crazy, it would be yep. awesome to kind of do a, like a hands-on chart analysis of something in the future. That would be amazing. Absolutely. There is, in terms of cycles and what's likely to happen, yes, there is some major, you know, something major going to happen. There may be some some severe volatility coming up. But I think probably we may be, we might get away with it for a few more months this year. But 24 is looking really interesting. It definitely is. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank yes, you ma'am. for it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming on. You're welcome. Bye bye.